Thank you very much for talking with us, Dr. Albert. First, can you uh, tell us a bit about yourself uh, and your medical background? Good morning. Thank you for having me. I am Dr. Renita Albert, resident in anesthesia and ICU care. Um, I am Cuban trained, would have graduated in 2015, worked in Linden for a little bit from where I originated, and so now I'm here at Georgetown Hospital. Tell us about your particular field of work. So I am in anesthesia ICU care. We take care of all patients that would need ventilatory support. Though we have other important functions, our main aspect is to make sure that patients receive adequate ventilatory support if they would need intubation. Help us to understand how you got into medicine and dealing with blood. Well, at a pretty young age, I would have decided I realized that I like helping people. It was my passion and I also had a, a, like for blood, a liking for blood. Um, so I had the support of my family. I was able to um, attain a scholarship and study medicine to assist with achieving this dream. Great. So you're now in the COVID-19 unit. Tell us about your work in that department. So in the COVID isolation unit, um, I must start by saying that our team anesthesia has been divided into two, but we are, both sides are still on the front line. In the isolation unit, it's our job to work along with internal medicine and infectious disease department as we are a team in keeping eyes on these patients who may eventually need um, intubation, which entails putting a tube down the throat and attaching them to a machine to assist them with whatever ventilatory care they need. That being said, the aim, the initial aim is to not have them intubated. So different mechanisms would be tried. Um, coughing exercises, different in positioning, things that may assist them in attaining the adequate respiratory status they need. Unfortunately, not everyone recover from these simple mechanisms and so we're there to do what is called timely intubation to see how best we can assist and manage them after, after this point. So just for the public's knowledge, George Home Hospital does have the capability to help a person to breathe on their own breathe if they can't on their own. Yes, we do. Great. And uh, has it been difficult working in that department? It has its ups and downs like every other department. It's difficult in the sense, um, from an emotional standpoint, we see a lot of young people coming in, etc. And this can take a toll on you, um, emotional wise, because, I mean, we don't want to see our young people being this ill. That being said, we are prepared in terms of equipment, etc., to do whatever is necessary to make them uh, as close to better as possible. Is there something that people can do at home to improve their breathing uh, if they're having difficulty with shortness of breath and so on? So we would advise them that if they have reached the point where they are experiencing shortness of breath, we would advise them to reach out, reach out to via the hotlines or if it is that severe and you need to come to the hospital then you need to get assistance from us because we'll be able to monitor you closely and to see when it might be necessary to um, go further in terms of treatment which may, may mean ventilatory support. Help people understand what shortness of breath means. Shortness of breath in layman, in layman term, um, you, you're accustomed to walking around your house or to sitting there and normally respiration is not something or breathing is not something we're conscious of. We do it because it's a part of our normal being. If you realize, if you're conscious that you are breathing or that you have to try or put emphasis and energy into breathing and it is increased with movement, etc., then that can be defined as shortness of breath. But that would, that would happen if you're doing some exercise or if you're working around the home, how, how can you tell the difference? So it does happen if you're working around the home or you're doing exercise, but you'd know the difference because everybody knows their capabilities. I may be able to do exercises for five minutes without developing shortness of breath. If I do these exercises and I realize it does not take that long for me to start with shortness of breath, etc., then I know that something is wrong. Likewise, maybe you're not doing anything, but you became conscious that you're having difficulty breathing or you lie down and it's, it's difficult for you to breathe in a position that you would have uh, normally been able to breathe in, then you'd realize something is wrong and that can be classified as shortness of breath. Thank you, Dr. Albert. So what are some things that people can do to uh, prevent them coming to this hospital? We wear masks and we're we only have it here because we're a great distance yes. from each other. Yes. So what people out there can do is adhere to the rules and guidelines being put out there by WHO, PAHO and Ministry of Health. They're only trying to help us to help ourselves. Social distancing, very important. If you need to go out, you need to go out. It's absolutely necessary. You can wear a mask, but you need to know how to use these masks 
correctly. Sure. Hand washing, etc. Um, I do have a mask here with me. The do's and don'ts of using the mask. Now the front of the mask is the filter. You need to avoid touching the front of the mask. If you are going to put on your mask, you put it on properly. It's covering the nose, the mouth, and it's sealed properly. Now this mask can attract attention to your face. Your aim is to not have all that attention on your face. Avoid touching your mask. When you are in a safe zone, your home or wherever, and you need to take it off, you take it off by holding the strings to the side and taking it off slowly to avoid, to avoid, um, excuse my glasses, but to avoid it touch, you touching the front, etc. That being said, um, there are other things you can do. Soap and water, guys. Wash your hands, proper hand sanitizing method, and avoid um, touching your face, etc. If you need to cough or sneeze, cover your cough and be very vigilant about symptoms you might or might not have. So those are some things we can do and we can, we can help to flatten the curve ourselves. We don't have to wait on assistance from the hospitals or from WHO or Ministry of Health. Um, so with all that being said, this is a country effort. It's a community effort. And I would also like to take the time out to thank all my other colleagues that are doing such a wonderful job in assisting with flattening this curve. Doctors from all the other departments, our nurses, our auxiliary staff, we have all of them working together to help to flatten the curve. I've noticed some surgeons were even sharing out hampers because we realize that it's an effort that needs the help of everyone. So on behalf of myself and the COVID ICU team, thank you so much for everything. And guys, continue to follow the guidelines of WHO PAHU and let's, let's flatten this curve. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.